All right, so I'm going to update the date because we're in the year 2020 now. Yay. And we're going to start um, by writing one of our public static void main methods, um, which will, in the end, we're going to create a new array list. We're going to initialize it with a certain number of random integer values. Um, we're then going to write a method uh, that removes all the even values from the list, and we'll print it out before and after to make sure everything is everything is working. So when we have, so when we create a local variable of type array list, the syntax is a little bit different than that of most other classes. Um, and you may remember this, we did a little bit with array lists in the context of the game of Life Lab um, when we had like an array list of locations. Uh, so you may remember that there's this odd syntax where after the identifier array list, we had angle brackets, and in those angle brackets, we specified the type of the elements in the list. So this is how we say we have an array list of integers. Um, and this is different enough where it warrants a, warrants a few comments. Array list isn't the only class that has this like angle bracket syntax. Um, this shows up in several parts in, in the Java language. Uh, this is the only place we're going to see it in the context of this course. Um, but this general concept, we say the array list is a Java generic. And Java generics is a new-ish feature in the Java programming language. It didn't always exist. You used to be able to only have just array lists of like generic objects. Um, and the issue with that is if you accidentally use the wrong types with your array list, everything would compile, but then you'd run your code and it would all crash. Um, by using generics, the Java compiler is able to do additional type checking, and so we catch these bugs at compile time instead of at runtime uh, when they're a lot easier to fix. So the array list is a Java generic. So therefore, every time we use the identifier array list, we have to specify the type of the elements in the list in angle brackets. And just to be clear, what I mean by angle brackets are, are these things here. We have to do that after every array list identifier. So basically, every time you type array list, type the angle brackets, and then ask yourself, what is the type of the elements in this list? And specify whether it's an array list of turtles, an array list of rectangles, an array list of strings, or in our case, an array list of, of integers. Now you may have noticed that I didn't say array list angle bracket int. Okay, um, I instead said capital I integer, and that's a little bit a little bit different. We can't have an array list of primitive types. Um, we can have only have a, um, elements that are of class types. So primitives, primitives. By that I mean things like int, double, boolean. They are not classes, as a reminder, um, and they cannot be specified as the type of the elements in the list, or in a generic, I guess. But when Java introduced generics, it realized, like, of course people are going to want a list of integers or lists of doubles. And so what Java did is, is it created um, these wrapper classes. So instead of using int and bool, um, we use the corresponding wrapper class. And, what I, and those basically is the same type name, more or less, but with capital letters because they're classes. They're not like primitive types. So we have capital I integer, we have capital D double, and we have capital B boolean. Cool. 
a reminder and a plug for our AP quick reference sheet that you all have. All of the methods of the array list class are on the sheet. In addition, the capital I integer and the capital D double classes are also on the sheet. Okay, so there's a, just a couple methods we use in relationship to those. Um, usually we don't call any methods on these wrapper classes. Everything just works automatically. Oops. Um, so here's, here's how we declare um, a variable my list whose type is an array list of integers. All right, so let's, uh, let's write the code that will be in our main method here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to call the static method called create random integer list. And we'll have to write this in a minute. But it's going to take two arguments. We're going to pass how many elements we want in the list, which will be 10. And we're going to pass the range of elements um, that we want as well. Oh, no, I completely forgot to like put all this in a main method. I got carried away. So let's do that. Sorry. All of this needs to be in a public static void main method like we usually write. There we go. That's a little bit better. So the first thing we'll do is we'll call create random integer list. Um, an array list, even though it's a generic, it's still just a regular class type. Meaning when we have an array list object, um, we can have methods like create random integer list that return a reference to an array list object. That's totally fine. We can have methods uh, that take an array list as a parameter. And that's fine as, as well. And we pass the reference to the array list. So after we create the list, let's print it out. System.out.println. And we can just say my list. So another nice feature of array lists class is that it implements the toString method. Meaning if we pass a reference to an array list object, the toString method will be called automatically within printlin, um, and it, the list will be nicely formatted. So unlike with the arrays, we don't have to write our own for loop just to print all the elements in the list. The other method we're going to write today is called remove evens. It takes one argument, which is a reference to a list, and it'll iterate through that list and remove all the elements whose value is an even, uh, whose values are even. And we'll print it again. And that's what our main method is going to look like. So we have two methods to write, the create random integer list method um, and the remove evens method. But before we do that, we have this compile time error as well that it can't find the symbol array list. Um, the array list class is a class we have to import. It's in the java.util package. So at the top of our file, we need to say import java.util.array. All right, so now we're in good place to implement our, our two methods. And we'll start by writing regular Java doc documentation for each method so we know what it's supposed to do. Um, our first method, this create random integer list, this method creates and returns a reference to an array list of the specified number of integer elements, Oops. where each element is assigned a random value between 1 and range. 
this is similar to like what we wrote with arrays, right? When we were working on array algorithms, there was a method that gener that created a new array of the specified size filled with random integers that we used for, for testing our, our algorithms. So one parameter is called is going to be called size, and it's the number of integer elements to add to the list. And the other parameter we'll call range, and it's the range of random values to assign to each element. More specifically, it will be from one inclusive to range inclusive. And then we will return a reference to the newly created and initialized list. Okay. So in the context of this method, there are two things related to array lists that we're going to, to focus on. Uh, so let's write the method header first. We'll make all these methods static just so for ease of testing we don't have to create an object. This method returns a reference to, a, to an array list. So the return type needs to be array list. And yes, we still need the angle brackets and we still need to specify Okay, it returns an array list of elements of what type? Oh, these are an array list of integers. And the method is called create random integer list. And it takes one parameter of type int, which is the size, and one parameter of type int, which is the range. Even though we learned of this new class, capital I Integer, we won't use it unless we're dealing with generics like ArrayList because it's just easier to use the actual primitive type int. Um, so keep using ints, keep using doubles. Don't start using capital I Integer objects all over the place. All right, so step one, we need to create a new ArrayList. An ArrayList is a class like any other class. So just like we did with making a new turtle or a new rectangle or a new whatever, um, we need to use the new operator. So we're going to create a local variable whose type is an array list of integer objects. We'll call it list and we'll assign it the reference return by saying I want a new array list. And even here, even with the new operator in the constructor, we still need the angle brackets. So basically, every time you type array list, include the angle brackets. Um, otherwise, you'll end up with some weird compiler errors if you're inconsistent. All right, so now we have made a new list. And that reference is stored in the variable list. This list has no elements. Its size is 0. So we need to write a for loop that will repeatedly add rant elements with random values to this list. So we can do that for int i equals 0, i is less than size, i plus plus. And then inside our loop we need to generate a random integer between 1 and range inclusive. And this is a snippet of code you really, really, really need to know because it keeps showing up over and over again. This is where we call math.random, and we multiply it by the range. We cast it to an int, and in this case, we add 1 because we want to go from 1 inclusive to the range inclusive. Now that we have a value, we can add it to the list. Unlike with arrays, we will never use square brackets with array lists. Okay, Square brackets are pretty convenient. That's a really nice thing about arrays. We don't have that with array lists. Everything has to be done through a method. So we have to call the add method and then pass as an argument the value that we're adding to the list. And 
And this is the first method we've called, so we should be document that. The add method adds the specified value. So I should say specified object to the end of the list. Sorry, I am inconsistent in my variable name. Let's let's make this one value as well. I'm not sure why I made that plural. It's just a single value. So value and value. Now something that might seem strange here is that we said we have an array list of integer objects. Like we're storing actual objects references in our array list. And in the, the comment here for the add method, it says it adds the specified object. But if we look at what we're adding, we're adding value. Value isn't an object. Value is just a variable whose type is an int. It's a primitive. Um, so there's, there's some stuff going on here behind the scenes, which we want to make sure like you're aware of. This is super common. Like we very often we have a primitive value and we want to add it to a list and so Java makes that easy and this particular feature is called auto boxing so you should be familiar with this this term um, auto boxing is when primitive values like the one we have here are automatically converted to their corresponding wrapper class. So that means if you have an int value, it's automatically converted to a capital I integer object within limits. Um, if it's expecting an integer object and you pass an int value, that's fine. Um, but let's say it was expecting a, a capital D double object and you passed an int primitive value Java will not do the type promotion and then the auto boxing as well. That's like too many steps. So just be aware that there are limits. So however, type promotion, like going from a int to a double, um, that does not occur. So really what the Java compiler does, and you don't need to type this part, when it sees code like this, what it really does is this. It automatically calls new integer, passing that primitive value as an argument. That returns a reference to a new integer object, which gets added to our list. Okay. Um, but it'd be like it'd be a pain if we had to type this every time. So Java makes our life easier. It does this automatically, um, which is great. All right, so we add all the elements in the loop, and when we're done, we return a reference to that list we created, and now we're in good shape. That's what our create random integer list method looks like. All right, so we got one more method to write. We need to write a method that has an algorithm that will remove all the values that are even from the list. So public static void remove evens. It'll take one parameter, which is will be in the array list of integer objects called list. And we'll document this with a Java doc slash star star enter. This method removes even numbers from the specified list. Cool. One parameter, which is the list of numbers to uh, potentially remove, I guess.
So there's in order for us to implement this method, we actually have to invoke several of the methods of the ArrayList class. So we're going to see three new methods here. Uh, the first thing we need to know about this list is how many elements does it have? We need to know its size. So we'll create a local variable called size, and in it we'll store the size of the list. And the way we get the size of the list is we call the size method um, on our list variable. The size method on a list is basically like calling dot length on an array. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, those names are different, right? Size versus length. If you mix it up and you say list.length with parentheses, like I know what you mean, the college board readers know what you mean, it'll be okay. But try to use the right, the right terms. Um, so just for completeness, the size method returns the number of elements in the list. So if we had added... 10 elements to the list in the first method, size would return 10. All right, so now we can write a for loop that will iterate through every element. So we can say for int i equals 0, i is less than size, i plus plus. And we need to determine if the element at the specified index is uh, no, or I'm sorry, is even or not. Um, with the array, this was really easy. We could use the square brackets. Again, we can't use square brackets with array lists. We have to call the get method. So the syntax for doing this would be the value equals list.get, and we pass one parameter, which is the index. Now, something that is the same between arrays and array lists um, and strings, fortunately all of this is consistent, is everything is zero-based index. So the index of the first element in our list is index zero. Uh, and the index of the last element of the list would be size minus one. Okay. So that's consistent, which is nice. So let's comment this get method. The get method returns the value of the element at the specified index. Cool. We need to check, hey, is this value even? The mod operator is an excellent way to do that. So if value mod 2 equals 0, it is even. And if so, we want to remove it. List.remove and we specify the index of the element we want to remove. So there's the fourth array list method that we've seen today. So the remove method deletes the element from the list. I'm sorry, deletes the element at the specified index from the list. And here's one other important thing, so I'll draw a picture of this in a moment, but all subsequent elements are shifted left. 